Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this one, we are checking out the Lim 5P, which is sitting at, or was well, sitting in, <laughs> oh, coffin baby, uh, sitting in rank 5 of the German tech tree at a battle rating of 9.0. So, let's hop into a game and I'll tell you guys a little more about it. So guys, starting things off about the Lim 5P, it is technically a MiG-17, but it was produced under license in Poland. So that's where the the Lim comes from, the factory name, and, and you can look it up. There's a pretty good Wikipedia article about it. But this is essentially an interceptor version of the MiG-17 with an afterburner. And something that sets this one apart from other variants of the MiG-17 is that it has three of the same caliber guns, so the NR-23, I don't, it's NR or NS, I don't know why my mind always blanks out, but uh, they're all the same caliber, whereas with like the MiG-15 and the MiG-17, just in the normal, regular, uh, the regular Russian tech tree, they have the 23 and a 37. So that makes the uh, makes it a little harder to aim since the guns have different ballistics. But you know, I I just think that having three of the same guns with the same ballistics is a lot easier to use and aim. And it it does show, although the muzzle velocity on oh, can we do it? The answer is no. Even if I spam it. Yeah, running into 104s is a delight. But they still have a pretty low muzzle velocity. So that does mean that you have to lead your shots just a little bit more. Especially, you know, if you're flying a lot of American jets. I feel like their bullets travel a lot faster. Let's see if we can get this F-86 here. And not die by the F-104's fury. Oh, he took out our radar. Jerk. He tried. He got one shot on me, but that was it. Let's go back for this F-86K. So normally when I'm... F okay. Normally when I'm flying this thing, what I'm going to do is try and coax the enemies into going vertical. Just because the power to weight ratio, or thrust to weight, whichever you want to call it, are the same thing. But... The thrust to weight ratio is honestly really crazy with the MiG-15 and the MiG-17. But the afterburner makes it just that much better. And in one of the clips that you guys are going to see later on in the video, uh, you are going to see a pretty good vertical stall fight type of deal. Uh, it was with the C Vixen, so... And a subscriber. <laughs> So, you know, he didn't have any guns, but it was still a great example since the Sea Vixen is a very powerful jet and a very fast jet as well. But as you can see there, if you're a little bit more accurate and really it's getting used to the to the guns as well, they do hit very hard, but uh, before you get the upgrade, the gun upgrade, they seem to spray quite a bit. So it's, it kind of ends up being more of a shotgun than an actual, like, cannon. Which, I mean, honestly could be worse. You could just have one of them and have it spraying all over the place. 
But you have... Okay, there's a lot... <laughs> That's a lot of Lin 5 Ps. It is also pretty important to manage your throttle and air brake in this plane just because of the compression. So that's something that you can also use to your... Okay, interesting. Uh, something else that you can use to your advantage is the air brake. It is pretty strong and it is at the rear of the plane so that makes things a little bit easier. But I'm wondering if we can get this hunter right here. But, you know, about the radar set, for being a jet in 9.0, the radar is honestly pretty good. Not that you can really do anything with it in... in just normal realistic battles since you don't have missiles at all you are a, a guns only type of plane but besides having some some ground clutter which is to be expected wow okay I'm so glad I got cliffs because I am not not doing my best here That hunter is still flying. But uh, the radar set is pretty helpful when it comes to going through clouds. Or if you G-lock your pilot and the enemy aircraft is still in front of you, you're still going to be locked on. Which, I, once again, if you're in the clouds makes it a little easier. But the radar at 9.0 without any radar missiles in realistic or arcade battles serves really no function. I mean, I've used it maybe twice. And it, it, was, it was both on, both of them were on this map and in the clouds. Oh, let me uh, concentrate here so I can... Okay. I'm sure you can hear the the disappointment in my monotone voice right there. But yep, there's a little just a little bit about the Lim 5, so we're gonna wrap it up right there guys and cut over to the full concentration clips where I was able to actually get some good kills. So catch you guys over there. Alrighty guys, so the first clip that you're going to see here is actually a pretty decent 1v1 with a subscriber and yes he isn't a sea vixen so he doesn't have any guns but it I really thought that this clip was pretty good to show off the vertical capabilities of the Lim 5 so I'll just let you guys enjoy this for a minute and I, I did get a a 0 0.7 kilometer snipe on him and also I'm American so somebody explain to me what a kilometer is but really quick on the Lim 5P it was based off of the MiG-17 PF so it's an all-weather fighter interceptor that's why it has the radar and here after this clip you'll see me use that a little bit and kind of just reiterate what I said in the live commentary portion. So what you guys just saw there is the, <laughs> the CL-13 not paying attention. So I went vertical, bled a little bit of speed to avoid compression, and just got on a 6. And right here you're seeing some a, a good example of managing your throttle and air brake. So certain situations, you know, obviously, if you're in a furball, I would not, <laughs> I would not always recommend just popping out your air brake like that, but it can be used to also, that poor guy, but another great example of the vertical capabilities of this jet. And here's the radar, like I was talking about, but... 
Anyways, what you're doing with the air brake is basically avoiding mostly aileron compression. Although this jet does get some elevator compression as well, around like 950 to 1000 kilometers an hour. And being a high subsonic jet, you will find yourself up in the 1050 to 1100 kilometer an hour range. And right around 1100 kilometers an hour, you are going to get the speed warning. I honestly haven't ripped my wings off due to speed by itself and at that speed your your elevator is compressing so hard that you're not going to be able to pull hard enough to rip your wings off anyway although there was one instance where I did rip off a wingtip and it happens but this is a, a quick five kill game right here it, it wasn't too bad but my main strategy when flying the limb 5 is to get my enemies to go vertical just because most of the you know the f86s are a little bit different but planes like the f9f and the a4b or e or h which you will all encounter or encounter all of them those earlier jets just don't have the thrust to keep up with this thing in a vertical so that is a very oh, effective strategy for getting your enemies but you can do a little bit of stall fighting with it although it's not not really the best idea if you get your landing flaps out it's not too bad I guess you would consider for a swept wing jet but that's always something to consider. So right here what you're seeing is once again another vertical maneuver and I just kind of kept going up to bleed a little bit of speed and also see what this, I think it's a, yeah, the, the FJ4. Uh, I also wanted to see what he was going to do and how he was going to react just to me being there and honestly he probably should have tried to turn underneath me so that I would have been more likely to compress into the ground which is a strategy for you American guys if you're going up against MiG 15s and, and 17s and LIM 5s and all, all of the MiGs and their license built variants so right here is the end of the clip once again pop my air brakes out to avoid compression and I, I go up as well just to pull a little bit of altitude on this F-86 and he, he goes around they do can not always do but they can pull better than you in some instances but nine times out of ten most Sabre players aren't really you know what I'm saying they're, they're Sabre players, uh, especially the guys with the F-86 uh, A-5, I think it is. The first Sabre that you unlock, they're not really comparable to the to the Lim 5. But really quick while I'm thinking about it, you know, this airframe probably should be at 9.3, but since the snail does not like Germany, uh, it doesn't get missiles, so at 9.3 I feel like it would probably be a little bit of a crapshoot. Just because of the fact that it doesn't have missiles for faster targets. I mean, you are going to see F-104s, but most of the time they're really bad at aiming and going too fast. So you don't really have to worry about them as much. And if they have missiles, it's just a pair of AIM-9Bs. And pretty much every jet at this BR can pull more than 10 G's and avoid the missile but you know like I mentioned the uh, the F-104s are kind of annoying to deal with just because they are so much faster than you even though the Lim 5 is one of the fastest subsonic jets in the match it gets outclassed by the American 104s uh, specifically 
the ones at 9.3. That's kind of annoying. And then any of the A4s, every single time, besides that last clip that you guys saw, every single time that I get behind one of them, they always try to snap roll, which is one of the most annoying things to come in, like, encounter at 9.0. It, except for the C Vixen. That one's pretty bad too. But, you know, just some some things to think about. Honestly, this jet is really fun to play, especially after getting the engine upgrade. It's, it's pretty beastly and it can ruin almost everybody's day, especially if you go vertical and they follow you up. There's not really much that they can do about it. But, overall, Pretty fun to play, but unfortunately this is probably going to be the last German jet that I actually put some time into. Just because of the fact that, you know, I would rather play the Chinese tech tree, which has some interesting license built aircraft. Or I'm just going to play the Russian tree if I want to play Russian aircraft. So, you know, after the early jets in the German tech tree, it kind of like starts to die down for me. And I just don't feel like it offers that much, especially compared to the other large tech trees like USA and Russia and Great Britain too, I guess. But just something to keep in mind. So we're going to wrap it up there, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.